and becoming even more iconic. She shot out ahead from the start and was almost a full body length ahead of her previous record. She was competing with herself the whole time and she did it with that ease and grace that is her signature. As if she doesn't know how to do it any other way. And earlier today when she set an Olympic record at the semifinals in this event, she said that felt easy. And tonight she made this look easy. I, I was really confident. Um, the 358 this morning felt really easy and I knew if I could just Push the back half really hard. I could, I could make it happen tonight. Feels great. Uh, the goal was 356, so I'm really happy. Check that one off. You know, she's 19 years old, and she holds nine of the ten fastest times ever recorded in this, the 400 meter freestyle. Just incredible. Again, the first gold for the U.S. swimming team. Uh, this is her 11th overall, not just Olympic, but overall gold medal of all the competitions around the world. Uh, she also has a silver in the Olympic from yesterday from their 4x100 relay freestyle. And she still has the 800 meter coming up a little bit later this week. So we have not seen the last of Katie Ledecky in these games. And it's going to be interesting to see what she's going to do next. Back to you. Wendy, so exciting. Let me ask you, uh, what has it been like to watch, you know, Phelps, Ledecky, women's gymnastics between all of those, you know, happening today? What has perhaps been the most riveting for you and, and for some of our locals going out to see it firsthand? Well, I think, you know, just going by what was happening in the broadcast center, you got to remember this is a massive room with reporters from everywhere. And when Ledecky started swimming, the place got quiet. And when she beat that record, everyone stood up and cheered. And we're old, crusty, cynical reporters. And <laughs> everyone stood up and cheered. They did the same thing for Phelps. And they also, um, not so much for the gymnastics. I think when with Gabby Douglas, that last one when she was on the, uh, the um, uh, bar, I think we were just... Uh, it looked like she wasn't it wasn't the beam right it didn't look like she was gonna she was gonna do it but it, you know I thought that backflip triple you know curve thing she did was was pretty freaking awesome but it's been it's been a great great night for the US Wendy Rieger I love you God bless you thank you so much we appreciate it all right so you may have noticed okay. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye, Wendy. <laughs> you may have noticed those uh, small circular marks on Michael Phelps and other athletes. It's a healing technique called cupping. It involves a cup attached to a pump. Athletes put the cup on their skin. It supposedly helps heal their sore muscles. To learn more about it, you can head to the NBC Washington Facebook page. Quite the talker today on all social media platforms. New tonight, the young son of a Kansas lawmaker killed in a deadly water park accident. It's not yet known what caused the tragedy, but Caleb Schwab was on the Verrucht at Schlitterbahn. Uh, this is a water park. This is the tallest water slide in the world that he was on. It's 17 stories high. The minimum age is 14 to ride it. According to our sister station in Kansas City, Caleb was 10 years old. Witnesses say people complained about the ride before Sunday's accident. A lady in front of me said that multiple times she rode the ride today, the Verruth, and that the front harness did not work any of the times that she rode it, and that she was there right next to the ride when it happened. Well, the ride is closed until further notice. Kansas State Representative Scott Schwab released a statement on his son, Caleb's death. It reads in part, quote, since the day he was born, he brought abundant joy to our family and all those he came in contact with, end quote. Tonight, a man is charged with killing a caterer after a Fairfax County wedding reception. Kempton Bonds is accused of stabbing Tyon Johns at Eleanor C. Lawrence Park in Chantilly Saturday, day, Saturday night. Bonds worked for Fairfax County Parks. Authorities say Bonds was angry that Johns was putting chairs into her company's truck. He believed they belonged to the park authority. They did locate a suspect uh, who, who did not leave. He was still on scene, and they took him into custody. Uh, the weapon that was used um, was a knife. They were able to locate the knife. 
News 4's Derek Ward has reaction from people who were at the wedding reception and now are trying to come to grips with what happened. Too much wickedness in the world today. Simone Spence says she was at the wedding reception at Eleanor Lawrence Park when 35-year-old Tayon Johns was stabbed. Police have charged 19-year-old Kempton Bonds with second-degree murder. The violent incident happened against a sylvan rustic backdrop at what was supposed to be the happiest of events. It was a wedding, a woman's day where she would never, ever, ever forget. And now she would never forget it for all the wrong reasons. Tayon Johns had started a catering business, using her skills as a chef and the people skills that those who knew her say made her special to them. Love to love, love to cook, just people in general just flocked to her. They spoke during the service at a Silver Spring church Johns had attended. Part of the service was devoted to her memory. Trying to make sure that she was making a difference and being able to better herself. Spence says there was tension at the wedding on the part of the accused. You could see it in his body language. He was tense. He didn't like being there, and we didn't like him being there. A friend of Bond says he couldn't believe what had happened. And I feel like this is extremely out of character for him. Um, as of right now, though, I feel not inclined to really jump to any sort of conclusions right now. Police say the situation got violent after Johns and Vons disagreed over who owned the folding chairs Johns was loading into a truck after her catering duties were over. Her friend says that's the tragic irony in all of this. She had to separate the chairs. She ordered chairs. Chairs took my friend's life. Derek Ward, News 4. Now we want to go to the campaign trail. There's a new poll out tonight providing fresh evidence that recent controversy surrounding Donald Trump is not sitting well with voters. NBC's Hallie Jackson breaks down the numbers. A Trump slump solidifying tonight. New numbers show Hillary Clinton up eight points nationally with just under two thirds of voters saying she has the right temperament and personality to be president. Two thirds think Donald Trump does not. Fresh evidence of fallout from one of his worst weeks yet. I think he's gotten the messages. He is very focused. He knows what he needs to do. I am confident that he's going to start doing it. Trump allies insist he'll get on script even after he spent days attacking a Gold Star family, something three of every four Americans now say they disapproved of, including most Republicans. The candidate consistent in his ability to court controversy. What he needs to do is to talk more about what Republicans want to see him talk about. Jobs, the economy, strong foreign policy. If he can do more of that and less of picking fights with people, he can get back in the game even without becoming a new man. Trump insiders tell NBC News he'll also focus on Clinton this weekend, taking aim at her response on how she's answered questions about her email controversy. I may have short-circuited it, and for that I uh, you know, will try to clarify. She used the term short-circuited. She took a little short circuit in the brain and she's got problems. 60% of voters say Clinton's not honest and trustworthy, with Senator Tim Kaine forced to defend his running mate's emails yet again. She said it was a mistake. I know that this is something that uh, she's learned from and, um, and we're going to be real transparent, absolutely. For the first time since last week's flooding disaster, storm survivors in Ellicott City are being allowed back into their buildings tonight. An update on their road to recovery. And I'm tracking another heat wave moving into the area when it arrives and when it starts to feel like 100 degrees this week, coming up in my forecast. A concert for a Fairfax County teen. His leg was amputated after an explosion in New York. I'm Shamari Stone. I'll tell you all about it. All new at 11. At the heart of our world is you. It's why our commitment to be the best will always be all about you. Excellence in flight. Korean Air.